Hello and welcome to Where You Not Entertained, where two film fans discuss their favorite flicks. I'm Daniel. And I'm James. And we are going to be continuing our Witcher episodes. Yep, we're on episode seven now. Uh, things are getting good. I mean, they've been good, but now they're <laughs> ramp- now they're ramping up. And things are just now good. Episode seven of eight. <laughs> well, we're getting, you know, all the loose ends are starting to tie together. Um, by the way, we're going to spoil everything, so watch the episode first. Yeah. Um, the big one for me was, oh my god, Geralt was in the castle. Yeah. When it was sieged. Yeah. And there was multiple opportunities for for the lioness to let Siri go and be safe. Yeah. And Geralt really gave it the good old college try. He did. But and in the end, no she avail. ends up wandering the woods alone. Yeah, and there, it's just it, I, it's so frustrating whenever you see it, like something like that happen in in film, <laughs> where it's it's just like they're so close. We've been trying to. Get them to meet up this whole time so that she can be safe and he can be set, you know. Yeah. He can feel okay, I guess, is what I don't know. Really, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's... He can take care of fate. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I don't know another way to really explain that, but... But, yeah, and it was just right there and just two ships passing in the night. Yeah, exactly. Zoom. Yeah, and so... That was frustrating, but uh, we did get a little bit more details on why Nilfgaard is the enemy. Um, the the level of zeal that they have in this is pretty is pretty heavy. You get a lot more of the the burning fl- the white flame. Yeah, and they've been more, calling them zealots for a reason, right? But you get more of the speeches. You get more of the indoctrination. There's a lot of uh, kind of uh, Soviet feels to them. Hmm, okay. Where, you know, when Yennefer is, uh, she finally breaks down and goes and talks to uh, Istred, Mm -hmm. and he's talking about how, well, they don't have much, but at least everybody has something, and it's not all about lining the pockets of the king. Right. And, it, you know, it sounds kind of like a a wealth-sharing thing. Right. And so, like, it has kind of, but they're all working in, like, this crappy mine, like, digging, and so it doesn't look like exactly fun labor well yeah but, <laughs> I mean, it's so, kind of what he wants to do but maybe not everybody else that's there right and you know they're forcibly conscripting mages until they've properly indoctrinated them right you yeah know, exactly and spinning it to make it sound like they're doing it for everyone's best good it's like just it, like the military well there's just like there's a lot of soviet vibes to it yeah because of that um yeah okay i see that now i see what you mean yeah, it, it does. It has that feel where it's, you know, even it sounds good, right? Right. Everybody taking care of everybody until you're like, really? Uh, we're just kind of, we're giving you scraps so that you don't starve to death, mm-hmm. but at the same time making you subservient. So right. have fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have plenty of life. It just won't have any meaning. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, uh, so uh, but this really ramps everything up, and you kind of the timelines feel like they fully converged. Um, this was more. This was a flashback because it's actually the lead up to the uh, to the fall of the city, right? Um, and so you you kind of are now able to piece together all of the different timelines that have been a little bit disjointed up until this point. Yeah, they're getting um, closer and closer. The convergence is coming. Right. <laughs> and so you you get all the uh, you get more detail on the fall of Centra itself, and you know how the law of surprise plays out, and how how the lioness ends up sending why the lioness ends up sending Siri towards Geralt after what seemed before to not be a pleasant relationship. And that means she didn't have much of a choice. She was a dead woman. Right. But you know, the, the argument is made to her before that point that she's being stubborn and that it's not going to end well. Cause the way these things always work when you go against destiny mm-hmm. and that, her arrogance, you know, to keep Siri with her, it might be the thing that gets Siri killed. Right. And if you really care about her, let her go somewhere safe and I'll bring her back. Yeah. You I know? mean, he offer. he's not like, hey, I'm going to take her and run away forever. He's right. He's just like, hey, let me pull her off the front line 
We'll see what happens here. Mm -hmm. And if all goes well, I'll bring her right home. Right. But no. Well, it was her confidence. Which, I mean, is what made her a great leader. I mean... That's how it always goes, though. That that level of confidence is also what made her great until her downfall. Yeah, being so. com- but there's a difference between confidence and arrogance. She wasn't just confident; she was arrogant because she had an option that was not going to harm her in any way, shape, or form. Right. But she, her arrogance said. This isn't a problem. She also, we even can though, handle this. Even though Geralt was, has been honest with her every single moment. Every she, step of the way. She just doesn't trust him. She doesn't trust anybody. Right. And I could see that. Well, she blames him. Yeah. That's the other side of it, is that she blames him for her daughter's death. Yeah. What really his fault, but, you know, whatever. Your, your daughter and her husband get lost at sea and somehow because I didn't let you kill him, that's my fault. Because, uh, yeah, otherwise she would have just murdered her husband and chosen somebody else for her to marry. And then when she died in a horrible way, it would have been her fault at that point. Right. Like, it, yeah, it's yeah. an idiotic or argument. She would have just killed you because she had screamed as soon as you killed him. Right. And everybody in that room would have turned to like blood dust or something. I don't know what was going to happen, but right. it wasn't going to be good. Well, there's a little foreshadowing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, you know, we do, uh, speaking of, get a, a get a moment of Siri losing her, losing her mind at the end. Right at and the end. And this isn't her scream. This is something very different and a lot more of an idea of what Siri is because there's been this air that Siri is very important. And yeah, they're, the to Nilf the white Gar- light. The Nilf Guardians are looking for her, not just because she's the princess, but because of who she is. Right. And there's the powers that her mother had mm-hmm. um, in the Hedgehog episode we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, there, there's more to Siri than meets the eye. Mm-hmm. And at the end, the channeling, I guess, is the best thing that we could call that. I think that's what you have to. Um, wh- whether that's some, like superpower or supernatural power speaking through her or whether that is mm, the past like intrinsic knowledge because she's some magic weapon or something like that Uh like who knows what it is at this point but um it happens yeah and i got a feeling those four boys aren't going to be real pleased to be in the vicinity no i don't think it's gonna i don't think it's gonna turn out well for them last time yeah what'd she say the the time for the time for sword and axe is nigh, or yes, whatever. Yes, which is the a, same thing that the throwback to what the what the uh, Nilf Guardian soldier said after he murdered the entire inn worth of people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Which is also like it, kind of a throwback to the games, and I'm assuming the books as well. So that's an important phrase. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm I'm assuming that uh, that those four guys in that horse. Probably aren't in in a good condition. No. <laughs> Even if they just kind of boof, you know, got flung a hundred feet in the air, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's gonna hurt when you come down. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Series out there surviving on her own, stealing horses and whatever. Yeah. Stealing clip or clop. We don't know which one. <laughs> um. One thing we haven't talked about is we haven't talked about Yennefer. She did have a good a good role in this where she was working with the mages and Maybe. getting pulled into <laughs> what the mages were doing. I don't know if it would be called working with. Well, but they're, they're trying to consolidate their power so that they can have put up a resistance against the invasions of Nilfgaard. Yes. Um, and help Sintra survive. And she's manipulated there and not happy about it. And But I I really like how she stands on her own. This feels like the first time that she's been in the group of mages where she seems like one of them and not like a lower member. Right. Like, while there are people who do not like her still, um, somewhat because they're just jerks and some of them because of the way that she has um, not fulfilled her role properly. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Uh, she didn't stay in line. She didn't know her place. Exactly. That kind of BS. But um, she 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 gives it as good as she gets in this. Mm-hmm. And 
you know, I, I really like her performance in this and I, I felt like it, it, now she is a full fledged, you know, independent mage. Right. Yeah. Sorceress, which she, I don't know what to call her. I, I think she's a sorceress. Yeah. But the common folk call them witches. Right. It's kind of like a slur. But they call themselves selves mages. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, mages then. Who knows? Yeah, we'll just call them mages. <laughs> if they call themselves mages, then they're mages. That's yeah. what we'll call them. Um, yeah, she's... She has the powers that they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that they realize that, that she's just as powerful as they are. Uh, and she comes in and she, I mean, she really stands, stands alone. Yeah. She stands alone. <laughs> she does. I mean, she's, uh, she's, she's got a point of view that is similar to one side of the group, but at the same time is still different enough that, um, you can't really say that she's on anybody's side, I guess. Yeah, I think that's fair. She's um, on her side and not on the side of doing dumb shit. <laughs> and I mean, that is also something that's really kind of spoken to in this. Um, you know, whenever she ends up going to see Istred, mm-hmm. um, there's, a, there's a pretty long monologue about how selfish she is. Right. And that has been her thing. She is just so focused on Yennefer getting hers. Right. Because nobody else has given her anything worth the value. Yeah. According to her. Yeah. Um, and she's pushed away everybody who has. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of her coming to terms with a lot of that. Because while she tries to reach out to him once she's hit, you know, once she once her goals haven't fulfilled her in the way that she thought they would mm-hmm. and he shoots her down because he's like i'm not going to be your consolation prize basically right. yeah um she gets a second opportunity when uh Trisaya, uh says please ask her to help for her right if not for not for the major's college then do it for her right please um while you don't get an answer here. I get the feeling that she's going to be at least somewhat reciprocal. You know, she'll somewhat uh, be swayed by that argument. Well, yeah, I think so because she does. No matter how cold she acts towards her, she does still look up to her and respect mm-hmm. her. Um, she is the. She one resents that, her, but she still cares. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and she's the one that saved her, essentially, mm-hmm. from what was and would have continued to be a horrible life. Right. I mean, her father was willing to sell her for a pig or something, the co- the price of a pig. So. Less than the price of a pig. Right. The pig was like 10, well, we'll say $10. I don't remember what the currency was. And he took like three for her. I think it's orns. I don't. Is the currency there. Cool. There's well, multiple, 10 orns to three orns. There's multiple currencies in The Witcher. Crowns are also another currency that are used in like Novigrad. Well, that's a real currency. Crowns? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Just saying. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sold her for, for cheap. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, she was essentially an abused slave. Mm-hmm. Was, that's, well, that's how her life was going to be. So she's got a right to be pissed off, but I just don't. Well, yeah, she's got a right to be pissed off, but at the same time. It's not getting her anywhere. You got, you got saved. Yeah. She saved your ass. Yeah. Well, then I think that pretty much covers this episode. It was a great lead up. Um, I feel like it's a, uh, we're, we're quickly coming to the end of this and that this was what we needed to start tying everything together for the finale. I was about to say, yeah, and so one episode left. Yeah, it, it was a good it was a good prequel to the end. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really enjoyed it, and I am very excited to talk about the final episode next week. Yeah, it'll be good. Yep, I think anyway. All right. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hit us up on social media. We'd appreciate it. Love to hear from you guys, and join us next time on Were You Not Entertained. Mm-hmm.